previous lecture we saw the order of magnitude analysis for boundary layer uh, over a flat plate. Now that gave us an estimation of the thickness of the boundary layer, the wall shear stress parameters like that. But what if we exactly want to solve those equations without going for any order of magnitude analysis. So to understand that how that might be possible, let us uh, rewrite the momentum equation that is uh, we are still considering the flow over a flat plate. That is the momentum equation that we were dealing with. Our objective is to solve this equation. We keep in mind that it is not that you have uh, just one equation and two unknowns because you also have the continuity equation to support the momentum equation. Now you can clearly see that even in such a simple form, this is this, this is a nonlinear partial differential equation. So the question is that uh, solving this just by using this particular form may not be very very simple, but there are certain techniques in which under certain circumstances the partial differential equations may be transformed into ordinary differential equations and one such important transformation is known as similarity transformation or stretching transformation. We will try to see that whether that means what we are trying to do we are trying to investigate whether it is possible to convert it as a function of a single variable, not two variables x and y, but a single variable where the single variable will contain both the information of x and y. And if we are successful in doing that, what is the objective that we will achieve? Because of having function of a single variable, the partial differential equation will be converted into ordinary differential equation. So, to highlight whether that is possible, let us just look into first a qualitative way in which historically this phenomena was understood. When this phenomenon was understood, historically a lot of effort was given by a famous scientist and engineer known as Blasius, basically a mathematician. So Blasius, what he tried to do? He saw one of the important behaviors that is if you look into the velocity profiles you see that these velocity profiles are not same. As you go along x, the velocity profiles change, but the velocity profile looks as if it is a stretched version of what it was at an x before that. So this motivated him to make a plot of say u by u infinity versus y by delta because it sort of normalizes the stretch because this is always confined between 0 to 1 this is also always confined between 0 to 1 and then it was found that if you make such a plot then u by u infinity as a function of y by delta is such that this functional variation this is 1 this is 1 this variation is same at all sections that means behavior at all sections may all be combined and normalized in this particular functional form. And this gives a very important physical insight that u by u infinity is a single valued function of y by delta. And you see that we have just seen from the order of magnitude analysis that delta is some function of x, right. In fact, it scales with square root of x that is what we have seen. So that means, see the dependence of both y and x, these are there and you may introduce a new variable which is like sort of y by delta, let us call it a new variable eta, which as a single variable is dictating the behavior. So this physics is see how physics is related to mathematics, that is what is very, very interesting because we will rigorously derive and come up with the same conclusion which from a very little physical insight could be obtained that this gives a motivation that this velocity behavior is a function of a single equivalent variable where that equivalent variable carries the information of both 
y and x, y explicitly, x implicitly through delta and that means that this variable eta may be of the form of y into some function of x, right? Because delta is some function of x and y is there. So, let us call eta or let us say introduce eta as y into g x, okay? Now, let us say that we write u or say u by u infinity as a function of eta because that is what we get from the normalized picture. Based on this one and we will remember that what is this eta? Eta is equal to y into g x. We will try to understand physically that what this transformation is trying to do. We will do that once we get an estimate of what is g x. We will see that mathematically that g x will scale with 1 by delta. See physically there is no, phys physically we, we are seeing that this eta is a function of, separable function of y and x. So, this similarity transformation is a special case of method of separation of variables that you have learnt in mathematics course. So, the variables are separated. So, you have effect of y and effect of x separated and because of a particular physics that is occurring this separation is possible and we will see this separation will become mathematically consistent separation of variables whatever physics is governing this it will also become mathematically consistent. That means, this g x will indeed come out from the mathematics to be of the order of 1 by delta and that we will show just from pure mathematics without going into the physics and that will give us a sort of equivalence between these two. So, the objective now is to use this similarity variable and make a transformation of this partial differential equation to ordinary differential equation. To do that, let us say that we want what first del u del x then so, different terms that we are looking for. So, what is this? We will just be using the chain rule, right. So, d u d eta is what? u infinity into f dash. So, when we write f dash, we what we are meaning is d f d eta. That is a shorthand notation we will use, okay. And then the partial derivative with respect to x, y into dg dx, right. So, we will write it g dash. So, we will use again a shorthand notation g dash is dg dx. So, both dash, but the variables are different. For f it is eta, for g it is x, okay. What is partial derivative with respect to y. So, u infinity, okay, first let us write the chain rule description and then we will write. So, d u d eta, so d u d eta is u infinity f dash, then that will be g. We also require a second derivative with respect to y. So, let us just do that. Second derivative with respect to y is like <coughs> first of all you have this f dash term. So, let us consider its second derivative. So, you have d f dash d eta that into g plus f dash is there and what? Hmm? D g d eta, okay, let us see. See, g is explicitly a function of x, right. If you want, let us write and see whether it is consistent or inconsistent. I do not mind. Let us just write. 
if you feel that this type of chain rule is going to work, let us just keep it as it is. <coughs> so, now see I mean before going into further let us investigate whether this sort of chain rule is going to work or not. See one important thing is you have to look for the description of the function in terms of explicit representation and implicit representation. See you have g as a function of x both explicitly as and implicitly. So, you have to think eta and x and two different variables, two different sort of independent type of variables. And then if you look into it in this way, see g does not understand what is x. So, this is this is what is you are writing in, in terms of explicit. So, g explicitly is a function of x only. So, it does not understand eta. Maybe there is an implicit interlinkage between eta, g, y, whatever, but it does not understand explicitly what is that. So, this is clearly equal to 0. Okay. So, this one d eta dy is what? g. So, this becomes g square. Yes, and that is what you see, you are not writing del g del eta, you are not writing partial derivative, that is what you have to understand. Okay. You are just writing the ordinary derivative. So, if you see, this is where knowing too many things is bad. Say you have started with a very basic calculus work, you know g as a function of x, if you are not asked to find out a derivative of g with respect to anything else other than x, that will be 0. So, that is what is we are, we are doing. So, you have g is equal to 2x you are asked to find out what is dg dy. So, what you will say? So, it is just like that. So, this is not, this is not a variable which is contained within g and ordinary derivative not partial that you have to be careful. So, <coughs> now let us try to write this expression see what would should be our strategy see v we do not know. So, we will write v from this expression and then eliminate that from the continuity equation by using the continuity equation. So, what will be v? v is equal to this one. Okay. that is the first term nu u infinity f double dash g square. See there is some lot of algebra in it. So, if I make any mistake please correct <coughs> minus in place of u it is u infinity into f and partial derivative of u with respect to x. So, you have u infinity another u infinity. So, u infinity square f f dash y g dash divided by u infinity f dash g right. <coughs> so, let us write v then term by term. So, nu f double dash by f dash g right that is the first term. Second term minus u infinity <coughs> f y <coughs> g dash by g. If we want to eliminate v, then basically you have to find out what is del v del y and then equate that with minus del u del x in the, in the continuity equation, then v will be eliminated. So, we have to differentiate it once with respect to y.
So, when you want to differentiate it with respect to y, g is a function of x that is like a constant for that partial derivative. So, nu g then basically you are dealing with this is a function of eta. So, d d eta of this one f double dash by f into del eta del y that is g. So, another g has come. So, this g into this g will make it g square. Then next term minus u infinity g dash by g is like a constant for it. So, for it there are two variables one is f another is y. So, for f it is like d f d eta <coughs> into minus unity square. I mean if there is some explanation has to be given then that is by what algebra. So, if I have made a mistake in algebra you let me know otherwise no explanation. Sir, that's why, um, hmm? sir, so, u by u infinity is f. So, when you have substituted u that is u infinity into f that is how f has come. Okay. <coughs> so, minus u infinity g dash by g then f into y you differentiate. So, this d f d eta into del eta del y is g plus f into the partial derivative of y with respect to y. So, that is 1. So, nu g square d d eta of f double dash by f minus u infinity g dash f dash d f d eta is f dash g and g get cancelled out minus u infinity f g dash by g. Which one? d d eta of yes this is f dash right ok. okay. Now, this d v del v del y is equal to minus del u del x from the continuity equation. So, that is equal to minus del u del x from the continuity and del u del x expression we already have. So, that is equal to minus u infinity f dash g dash y. Here, this term has y, right? Yes. G into y, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, because it was a product of f into y, so y has to be there, right? Okay. So now, if you look into these equations, so we have this as in, in one side and this in the right hand side right. So, if you just compare these two you will see that first of all <coughs> oh, of course, there is another term in the left hand side this one also. Okay. So, if you compare these two these two terms get cancelled out right. So, we are left with the form of the equation let us just write it. <coughs> so, we write this as <coughs> nu g square d d eta of f double dash by f dash <coughs> is equal to u infinity there was no u infinity here okay that's fine u infinity f g dash by g okay <coughs> so we may just isolate 
the effects of the variables eta and f in this way right the purpose of the way in which this was done is to show that now you are able to rearrange it in a way that the left hand side is a function of eta only, right hand side is a function of x only. These two variables do not explicitly know each other. So, this is a function of eta only, this is a function of x only. This implies that each has to be a constant. <coughs> Let us say that the constant is k. Okay. So, long as this proportional relationship is satisfied, it does not matter what constant we take, that is what we have to understand. Because we are satisfied with this equality, equal to what is not going to matter us a lot. So, we will choose this k in a way that just helps us in our algebraic simplification. To get a clue of that what should be a good k for that. Let us consider this equation and maybe try to find out g as a function of x. So, now if you integrate this, this will give you g as a function of x. So, what is this one? So, you have dg dx 1 by g cube dg dx is equal to k into nu by u infinity. That means, g to the power minus 3 dg is equal to k nu by u infinity dx. So, if you integrate it g to the power minus 2 by minus 2 is equal to k nu by u infinity into x plus some constant of integration right. How do you know what is the constant of integration? You must know g as at some point where you know x. So, at some point you must know the relationship between x and g. So, think of the flow over a flat plate, this is the flat plate, the boundary layer is there. Can you tell what is g at x equal to 0? Yes? Try to remember the physical meaning of g. g is like scales with 1 by the boundary layer thickness. So, g tends to infinity as x tends to 0. One of the important things that you have to remember is the boundary layer theory is singular at x equal to 0. That means, you do not really have at x equal to 0 delta equal to 0. You only have at x tends to 0 plus delta tends to 0 plus that is all. But exactly at x equal to 0 that is not always you see in, in books or whenever we say we loosely say at x equal to 0 delta equal to 0. Obviously, it is it is ok in an approximate sense, but if you rigorously want to state what is the boundary condition, then the important thing is at x tends to 0, you have that delta equal delta equal to 0, because at x equal to 0, it is a singular behavior, it does not have any definition of the boundary layer thickness. So, that means, if you utilize that, that at x tends to 0 plus g tends to infinity, then c will be equal to 0. So, from this what we conclude? <coughs> g square is equal to minus k by 2 nu, sorry minus u infinity by 2 k nu x. Right? One of the important physical restrictions is that k has to be negative, because g is a 
positive quantity it, it is meaning the inverse of the boundary layer thickness. So, any negative k choice is fine, but what we may choose may be a good number is k equal to minus half that somehow nullifies many of the bad numbers. So, let us say k equal to minus half this is just choose not a must not a ritual this is just like a convenient way of doing it algebraically. So, when you do that then g becomes square root of u infinity by nu x. You see if you recall from the order of magnitude analysis we got delta scales with square root of x. So, this is this scales as 1 by delta. So, from mathematics you are getting back the same physics that you got from a order of magnitude analysis. Now, with the same k important is with the same k because so long as you keep the same k it does not matter what k you take by satisfying this condition you may solve for the f because f is what is important for you f gives your velocity profile u by u infinity is f. So, let us do that. So, you have d d eta of f double dash by f into 1 by f is equal to minus half sorry f dash then d of f double dash by f dash is equal to minus half f d eta. So, in pos in principle it is an integrable form only thing is you do not know f, f, f explicitly as a function of eta, but the form is separable and integrable. Now, to make it a bit more convenient, let us say that we say that integral of f d eta is equal to capital F. Just because this is a sort of an integral form, we want to convert it to a new variable which will give us a convenient form where as if this integral is already there question is what could be physically this f. So, we can write d f d eta is equal to small f. See this f includes also constant of integration see because when you integrate this there will be a constant of integration, but the constant when differentiated will give, give back the same thing. So, we will not explicitly use any constant of integration when we integrate this constant of integration is inbuilt with this capital F that we have to understand or keep in mind. So, if you see that f is velocity, this is another special derivative of velocity. So, it is equivalently like a stream function. So, let us try to see, let us recall the definition of stream function. This is a two dimensional incompressible flow, so stream function definition is valid. So, u equal to del psi del y, right. So, you can write this as <coughs> say if u is a function of eta only then stream function will also be an eta in that way or u by u infinity is a function of eta only then this is d psi d eta into this one. So, this is like g x, but most important thing is that when you write u d eta see u is what u is u infinity into f. So, when you write f d eta by separating variables here then whatever you get as d of that that is the equivalent of a stream function with a of course a multiplying factor that means capital F has a significance of a stream function in a transformed manner, but it has a significance of a stream function. So, basically as if we have eliminated v by using the stream function. So, keeping that in mind let us uh, <coughs> complete the description of the equation. <coughs> so, you have d of small f double dash means capital F triple dash by capital F double dash is equal to Uh, 
that means f triple dash 2 f triple dash plus f f double dash equal to 0.